Hello, this is a brief inter oh, a brief brief overview of the PRC 148 as it's currently modeled in Acre Build 506. Uh, let's get on. Uh, the interface is pretty much the same as it was in Acre 1. There are a few functions on the interface that differ slightly, uh, but that's more for the nitty gritty stuff which we'll go on to cover in a bit. On the top left we have the on off volume and panic zero eyes knob. Uh, just here. Uh, turn this to the left with your left mouse button. We'll reduce the vo volume and eventually turn the radio off. Uh, turning it to the right with your right mouse button will eventually turn the I'll turn it back on if you've already turned it off and raise the volume. As we see here. Um, to the right of this, we have the channel switch. This uh, is the first part of the interface to differ from Acre 1. Uh, Acre 1 you would use your arrow keys or this to swap between any of the preset channels or customized ones however you had your radio set up at the time. Uh, in Acre 2 this is uh, this knob is the only way to change your channel on the radio. Again, left click this time left clicking to increase the channel, right clicking to decrease it. Uh, the channels you have access to in this, because the knob only has 16 stops uh, it depends entirely on the group settings on your radio. In this case, group 1 will give you access to channel 1 through 16, and group 2 will give you access to channels 7 through to 32. Sorry, 17 through to 32. Uh, as you can see here, uh, below the top two knobs, we come down to the main display. I'll go over what each of the things in this mean later on and we come down to the keypad. On the 148 some of these buttons have multiple functions for example mode, group and escape buttons oh, and the enter button. However obviously with the limitation that you can only press one button at a time on the interface to access the alternate functions we'll be holding down our alt, the alt key on the keyboard. Uh, the first bu button we come to is the mode. This uh, in its default, or its default mode will bring up the mode menu. It's got a few options there, which I'll go into later on. In its alternate mode, by pressing and holding Alt, will bring up the programming menu. Again, something we'll go into a bit more detail later on. Uh, to the right of this, we have our group button. Limited functionality at the moment only determines what channels you have access to through your channel knob. Uh, clicking it will bring up group menu which can switch through the two active no the two available groups. At the moment you can't program the oh these groups or any further groups. Uh, I believe it's possibly been looked into. Don't take my word for it. Uh, to the right of this we have the escape and lock button. Uh, it doesn't have any lock functionality at the moment that I'm aware of. Uh, however, it's just the button that you'll use to hop to uh, go back to the previous menu you were last in. Uh, for example, mode, escape. Simple stuff. Um, enter will select uh, the current setting, the menu you want to go into. It will choose the thing you want to adjust fairly self-explanatory, the only difference being that the default screen, clicking on it will bring up a bit more information about the channel you have currently selected. Uh, our two arrow keys have a little bit more functionality in Acre 2, uh, as well as changing the select, you know, the menu item you have selected or the setting you have selected. Uh, if it's something like a description or a frequency, the pressing and holding the alt button while clicking this will move the selection left or right. Uh, if I look at this right... Yes, selecting the right, the up arrow key will move your selection to the right and your down arrow will move it to the left. As you can see I've reverted the display back to channel 1. Uh, it's still on its default settings. Uh, going over the display we have a couple of bits of information in the initial display that you're shown after you turn the radio on. The group setting, 
channel description. Uh, the encryption mode, in this case it's plain text, and the believe the oper the modulation setting or operating mode as it's described in the manual. Uh, as I showed before, pressing enter brings up a bit more information. We have our receiving and transmitting frequencies here. Uh, I'll go into a bit more detail about how we set them and uh, later on. We also have our receiving and transmitting CTCSS tones. Uh, again, I'll do a very, very brief coverage of them, but if you want more information on what that is, go look it up on Wikipedia. Uh, we have our mod uh, modulation settings, traffic rate, I believe that's more used for the data setting, which we don't have an acre to at the moment, and our encryption key, again, or the encryption key location, again, this isn't something we have currently in 506. Okay, now that I've gone over the interface and the display, I'll uh, briefly, I'll try to briefly go over the programming settings and putting in your own custom frequencies and channel description. As I said, uh, to access our programming menu, we go to the, uh, using our alt key mode, go down to program, any of these other settings at the moment as they don't have any function will return this lovely message. Alright, uh, so programming, down to channel. The other ones again don't have any function, so I'll return that error message. First thing you're presented with here, your uh, channel number. Uh, again, to switch between these channels, we use the channel knob, as the arrow keys don't have a function in that regard. In this case, they'll switch you between the uh, menu items. So, we'll just uh, customize channel 1 then. So right there we have our uh, encryption setting, I think. Encryption mode even, sorry. Uh, for at the moment we only have plain text or secure. Uh, I'm not too sure if secure, no, comsec is working in 506. I don't believe it is, so I'll just leave that on plain. Our next setting is the channel description. Uh, this is what you'll see in, if we go back, or to go back to the the, uh, the default view, uh, display. So in this case we are part of 2 platoon, so I'll just name this 2 platoon. Arrow keys change the character that you've got selected. And pressing all button will select between what you want to do. Uh, down arrow going left, right arrow, going, or the up arrow going up right. Set this. And then once we've finished that, press enter to accept the setting. Um, now if we were to go back to our description menu, it would display group 01 and then below that, Tupleton. So I know I'm on Tupleton now. Uh, below this we've got our power rate settings. This varies as it did in acre 1, between 0 0.1 watts and 5 watts. And to change that, just enter to select it. And down in our arrows to go between the values. We'll just leave that at 5 watts. Uh, below this we have our operating mode. Uh, in reality the 140 has a various number of these, including Singars. At the moment we're only using basic. Going down again, this comes into where we're programming our frequencies. So our receiving and transmitting frequency are generally going to be the same unless we're working with a radio relay point or retrans, uh, which I'm not going to get into in this video. For this case, we are Tupleton and C Company, so 
we are using four uh, zero four one and six two five. Well, you'll see it changes your transmission frequency to the same as your receiving one. However, you have to change your transmission frequency, it's not going to revert your receiving one. Uh, just a demonstration. There you go. Yeah, never mind. Ah, I'll be right. Uh, remember with the 148 and most of these radios you'll have, you have to have a channel, uh, frequency spacing between your channels of, I think it is, 25 kilohertz. So all the next channel, well, frequency up, I'm going to want to use is uh, 41650, I think. I'll look into it another time. Below this we have the receiving and uh, transmitting CTCSS tones. A uh, general description of these is a series of, or oh, a set of frequencies of sub audible thing, uh, tones that your radio will pick up. And if you're on the same sub, you have that same sub audible tone, your radio will receive that signal. If you want a better and clearer description, go look up on Wikipedia or YouTube. They can offer you much better descriptions than I can. All this we have our uh, modulation type. We've got FM, AM and narrow band at the moment. So let's say I'm just going to keep it on FM. Traffic rate, as far as I'm aware this isn't a factor unless you're using the data mode which unfortunately, or arguably unfortunately, we don't have access to this in Acre 2506 at the moment. Uh, next up is your encryption key location. Again, it's not something that we'd have to deal with just yet. I believe it's in the works. I'm not too sure how far how down the line though. I wouldn't expect it for the final release or the initial release though. Uh, next up we have our repeater delay, fade bridge and initial bit synchronization. I'll be honest, I have no idea what these do. I don't believe they're functional however. New can probably correct me on that. Last up we have our squelch value. Uh, very simple explanation of what squelch is for those that don't know. The higher the squelch level, the stronger or oh, better the signal has to be for the radio to receive it or for you to hear it. Uh, the lower it is, the lower quality the signal you can ha use or receive. Pre is the default setting, just going to leave it at that. It has a range of settings, I believe up to 9? No, no, only up to 7. And uh, that's a brief overview of programming your 148 and the various menu options there. Again, go on to the next one, channel 2, and you can go about doing the same thing for whatever else you're using. And to back ourselves out of this menu, exit, escape, escape, and there we go. You'll see that the channel description has been changed to what I assigned it in the programming mode. And if we press enter, there you can see 41625 is our frequency. Our squelch level is not shown there, but our CTCSS tones are still there and have not changed. Uh, what some of you have seen in both uh, news videos showing off the features and uh, my previous video, uh, just giving a brief now, somewhat half hour demonstration of the uh, 148, you'll know that it has different well, speaker modes. This is due to the the 148 having both a top out audio output, a side audio output, and, and, and an internal speaker. Uh, to switch between these, we just go to our regular mode menu, so uh, clicking it once without pressing ALT, and you'll see these settings at the moment. None of these work to my knowledge, these three, beacon voice or cloning. Uh, to switch between 
the settings. Uh, top. Uh, we click on the first one. At the moment it's set to top audio. So that is essentially just going to your headset. The next setting along is the top of, I believe, side tone. What this would mean is that you would have, when you transmit, you would hear your own voice in your ears. I don't believe that's present at the moment, so it'll just sound the same as if it was in regular top mode. Again, side audio, that's the quick, now we're going out, the side jack, at the moment, it's the same as the uh, top mode. Again, side with side tone, same as top, top, uh, side tone, or whatever it was. Uh, you would hear your own voice. Not a matter, not happening here. In internal audio, that's your internal speaker, so that you would get you and other people around you would be able to hear what's coming through the radio. Not great if you're being trying to be sneaky. Uh, worth noting, it's quite quiet, so not great to have on if you're getting shot uh, or you're putting out fire yourself. More useful though if you want other people to hear what's going on around you. Or if you just want to leave your radio here. A cool feature I'm informed is that if you have a radio in a ammo container, so your uniform vest, or I think rucksack, I'll get to test this. Uh, I'm informed that this will also, you'll also be able to hear the radio output from that object if you move away from it as the radio is on internal audio. Yet to test that, if I do get a chance I will record a testing clip, uh, or a demonstration of that in action. Nope. Um, follow that, my somewhat brief overview, somewhat rushed and probably unclear overview of the 148 is complete. If you've got any questions stick me up on YouTube and ask. Uh, I'll try to get myself to answer them and pester new to answer them. Otherwise you're probably better asking in the BIF forums, or the BI forums, in the acre two for Armour Free Thread. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, ciao.